After the great revival of Oak Oi, the prophet was directed by the Holy Spirit to go out on further missionary journeys. But even before this, people from other parts of the country had been spreading the glad tidings of Oak Oi, Elisa's great revival, to other parts of the country. Accompanied by some followers, Joseph Babalola went to Wafa, in present Kwara state. Characteristically, people turned out to hear his preaching and see miracles. The Muslims in Afa became jealous and for that reason incited the members of the community against him. To avoid bloodshed he was compelled to leave. He next stopped in USI in Akitalan for his evangelical mission, and he performed many works of healing. From USI, he and his men moved to Efan Alaai, also in Akitalan, where they received a warm reception from the Oba Alaai of Efan. An entire building was provided for their comfort. Babalola requested an open space for prayer from the Oba who willingly and cheerfully gave him the privilege to choose a site. Consequently, the prophet and his men chose a large area at the outskirts of town. Traditionally the place was a forbidden forest because of the evil spirits that were believed to inhabit it. The Oba tried to dissuade Babalola and his men from entering the forbidden forest, but Babalola insisted on establishing his prayer ground there. The missionaries entered the bush, cleared it, and consecrated it as a prayer ground. When no harm came upon them, the inhabitants of Efen were inspired to accept the new faith in large numbers. Babalola's evangelistic success in Efen Alaai was a remarkable one. Archdeacon H. Dalimore from Adu Ekiti and some white pastors from Ogbamoso Baptist Seminary were believed to have come to see for themselves the wonder-working prophet at Efen. Both Dalimur and the Baptist pastors reportedly asked some men from St. Andrew's College, Oyo and Baptist Seminary, Ogbamoso to assist in the work. The success of the revival was accelerated by the conversion of both the Oba of Efen and the Oba of Aramoko. They were both baptized with the names, Solomon Alejer Agunsoi and Hezekiah Adioi respectively. After this event, news of the revival at Efen spread to other parts of Akitaland. The missionaries also visited other towns in the present Ondo state. Among them were Owo, Ikare, and Oka. Babalola retreated to his hometown in Odo Ova to fortify himself spiritually. While he was at Odo Ova, a warrant for his arrest was issued from Ilorin. He was arrested for preaching against witches, a practice which had caused some trouble in Ochuo in present Bendel state. He was sentenced to jail for six months in Benin City in March 1932. After serving the jail term, he went back to Efen Alai. One Mr. Cyprian E. Yufan came from Creek Town in Calabar to entreat Babalola to come over to Macedonia and help. Yufan had heard about Babalola and his works and wanted him to preach in Creek Town. After seeking God's direction, the prophet followed Yufan to Creek Town. His campaign there was very successful. From Creek Town, Babalola visited Duke Town and a plantation where a national church existed at the time. Certain members of this church received the gift of the Holy Spirit as Babalola was preaching to them and were baptized. When the prophet returned from the Calabar area, he settled down for a while. In 1935 he married Dorcas. The following year Babalola, accompanied by evangelist Timothy Bababusui, went to the Gold Coast. On arrival at Accra, he was recognized by some people who had seen him at the Great Revival in Elisa. After a successful campaign in the Gold Coast, he returned to Nigeria. The birth of the CAC in Nigeria. The spectacular evangelism by Prophet Joseph Ayo Babalola brought with it a wave of persecution to all who rushed into the new faith. The mission churches allegedly became jealous and hostile, especially as their members constituted the main converts of the faith tabernacle. It was widely rumored that the revival movement was a lawless and unruly organization. The Nigerian government was put on the alert about the activities of the movement. At this time, the leading members of the movement were advised to invite the American faith tabernacle leaders to come to their rescue. The leaders from America, however, refused to come as such a venture was said to be against their principles. As a matter of fact, the association between the Philadelphia Group and the Faith Tabernacle of Nigeria was terminated following the marital problems of the leader of the American group, Pastor Clark. The Nigerian group then went into fellowship with the Faith and Truth Temple of Toronto which sent a party of seven missionaries to West Africa. Again, the fellowship was stopped when Mr. C.R. Myers, 
the only surviving missionary, sent his wife to the hospital where she died in childbirth. Despite these disappointing relationships with foreign groups, the Nigerian faith tabernacle still considered it prestigious to seek affiliation with a foreign body. The rationale for this can be found in D.O. Ajibanjo's letter to Pastor D.P. Williams of the Apostolic Church of Great Britain of March 1931. In the letter Ajibanjo claimed, the officers of the government here fear the European missionaries and dare not trouble their native converts, but often, we brethren here have been ill-treated by government officers. This was followed by a formal request for missionaries to be sent to strengthen the position of the Nigerian faith tabernacle. Missionaries did come and, on their advice, the Nigerian faith tabernacle was ceded to the British Apostolic Church. Consequently, the name changed from faith tabernacle to the Apostolic Church. Doctrinal differences between the two groups soon began to appear in form similar to the ones that caused the termination of the association with the American groups. The subject of divine healing was one of the most important issues. Some of the invited white missionaries from Britain were found using quinine and other tablets, and this caused a serious controversy among the leading members. It was unfortunate that the controversy could not be resolved, and the movement subsequently split. One faction of the church made Oak Oy its base and retained the name the Apostolic Church. The other larger faction and in which Prophet Joseph Babalola was a leader eventually became the Christ Apostolic Church. This church had to go through many names before May 1943, when its title was finally registered with number 147 under the Nigerian Company Law of 1924. Today, the church controls over 5,000 assemblies and reputedly is one of the most popular Christian organizations in Nigeria and the only indigenous organization with a strong faith in divine healing. Professor John Peel recorded that the membership of the CAC in 1968 was well over 100,000. That figure must have doubled by now. The church opened up several primary and grammar schools, a teacher's training college, a seminary, maternity homes, and a training school for prophets. The years between 1970 and 1980 saw further expansion of the church to England, Ivory Coast, Sierra Leone, and Liberia. At present, the church has its missionary and general headquarters in Lagos and Ibadan respectively. Babalola was a spiritually gifted individual who was genuinely dissatisfied with the increasing materialistic and sinful existence into which he believed, the Yoruba, in particular, and Nigeria, in general, were being plunged as Western civilization influence on society grew. The CAC believes that the spiritual power bestowed on Babalola placed him on an equal level with biblical apostles like Peter, Paul, and others who were sent out with the authority and in the name of Jesus. Thank you for watching. Please share and subscribe.